just Rory and Jude. He said it as he stretched up to kiss her on the lips. They'd known each other pretty much their entire lives. He'd been her best friend and her roommate in the nearly two years after Zack's murder. They'd only shared that first kiss the New Year's Eve before and hadn't become a real couple until later than that. It'd be good to go on a vacation together. Things between them were good. It had felt totally natural to be with him. She'd loved him before Zack, and then he'd been there after Zack, and she'd loved him again. She was past the point where she questioned her glorious second chance at forever with a man she knew would love her just as long. Her man. A good, strong man who loved his people. A man who died to protect not just her, but the people in town. As a cop, Jude took that commitment even further. She knew when he made a commitment, he'd keep it. It was part of her attraction to him. That steadfast loyalty and strength of character. Even when she worried, though they lived in a small, relatively safe town, that one day she'd have to face his death too. Sometimes, in the dead of night, it paralyzed her, swamped her and blurred the memories of how it had been to hear Zack was dead. But it meant something to him. He did it because he cared. Serve and protect weren't just words on his vehicle. He felt them deeply. She admired that, even as it scared her. On top of that, he looked like walking sin, a face that made her tingly all over just looking at it, a slow, sexy southern drawl, hands that knew their business, a mouth he used to her great delight. They had chemistry in a big way. Sex that left her weak-kneed and gasping for breath. Dominant, too. A man who'd never use his strength to harm her, but who used that strength to take her to the darkest, sweetest of places, all while holding her so she wouldn't drift away. He didn't hurt her, but he knew how to take her on a ride of pleasure just on the very edges of pain. She loved it. More than that, she craved it, found solace and satiation in it. They fit in ways she couldn't possibly begin to describe with enough wonder and gratitude. Jude made her whole. Chapter 3 Well, I can't lie and say I'm not disappointed you won't be here on Christmas morning. Kelly topped Rory's coffee off before sitting back down at the dining room table they sat at every Friday morning. Her sister's house had become as comfortable as her own, a second home in many ways, and a place she knew would always welcome her. While Rory had told her sister about the change in plans two weeks before, right after Jude had told her about it, it had been clear Kelly wasn't entirely happy with the situation. We need this, Kel. Rory toyed with the edge of the newspaper her sister had been reading before she'd arrived. I know. I know you do. It's just, well... This is the first Christmas since Zack that you're... Kelly licked her lips, Rory knew, searching for just exactly the best way to say normal. So Rory did instead. Normal. She shrugged. Oh, don't look so guilty. It's true. Losing him made me a little crazy for a while. But during that time, Jude was always there for me, patiently loving me even when I was in pieces. I imagine it has to be hard living with Zack's ghost. Max said the other day that he'd never seen his brother work harder or be a better man than he is with you. But how can you compete with the memory of a guy like Zack? Her stomach tensed for a moment. He doesn't need to compete. If he feels that way, I'm doing this all wrong. Rory sighed. Zack was gone and she'd accepted it. But the time after he died had been dark. He'd been her husband. She'd loved him with all her heart and soul. Jude never expected her to act any other way, and she was grateful for it. Had known by the time they finally came together that it was meant to be that way. He'd proved over and over that he loved her and would care for her, had shown her the depths of his commitment to her and their relationship. Part of that had been him taking a back seat to Rory's need to put the ghost of her life with another man to rest. He deliberately put himself and his own needs on the back burner for me. He may have acted like a dick years ago, but he loves you. No doubt in my mind, and Max is probably right about Zack. Kelly groaned. 
I hate it when I have to not be selfish. She winked. Rory laughed. This time away is about building something that is Rory and Jude. He deserves that, and I want it too. It feels like I've loved Jude since I was a bitty girl, you know. But that's different from this thing we have now. Well, you have grown-up love, complete with in-laws and all that politics stuff that comes with it. Relationships are different than crushes or even dating. You know that. I know, I do, and I totally agree. I see this trip as a big foundational wall in our relationship. We need to build it to put the work into it. Hell, I need to do it so he knows he's first and foremost. I don't want to phone it in. Kelly burst out laughing. Rory, the way you two look at each other is so hot. It makes me want to shove my husband into a closet and violate him that very moment. You two are connected in a big way. He absolutely adores you. I had my doubts. I can't lie, but he's been good to you. Always put you first. He'd do anything to make you smile, and how can I not love him for that too? Rory blushed. The heat on her cheeks also due in part to how hot it was that he looked at her the way he did. I love him more than I ever thought possible. He makes me happy, fills me up, and makes me feel beautiful. I want to put him first. I want him to be as happy as he makes me. I want him to know without a doubt that what we have isn't a rebound thing or me settling. Kelly squeezed her hand. That's the key to a successful marriage. Well, that and good sex, though. She lifted a shoulder. Combining those things is always a plus. I just never want him to feel second best. But it's hard to find a way to say it without bringing Zach up, and I don't want to make him think I'm hiding it either. It's a careful walk right now. Of course it is, baby. You both love each other. You care about the other's feelings. That's why it's so hard. And frankly, I think that's why it works. You both understand you had a second chance at love. It's rare enough to find it once, the way you and Zach had it, but you and Jude have it too. In your own way, it's not the same, and I think it's better that way. Imagine if it was very similar; you'd be wondering deep down if it was just that you saw parts of Zach in him, and that's why you were with him. And he'd wonder the same thing. Rory took a deep breath and sipped her coffee. It was good to be understood the way she and her sister shared. Thanks for listening. Kelly narrowed her eyes at her sister. Any time. Now you'll be back in time for New Year's Eve, though, right? Rory snorted, nodding. Of course. All right. Then I love you, and I'm always here for you. Across town, Jude was at the diner eating breakfast with a friend of theirs who dropped in while in the area for his job. Cole was someone he'd originally worked with on some cross training between local and federal law enforcement. Shortly after the assignment had ended, they'd run into each other at a club. A DS-themed club in Nashville. Cole had been very much in the closet about his sexual preferences. He worried about people finding out he liked BDSM and kept his activities to states farther away from where he currently lived. Jude had, at that time, lied to himself about what he was and what he liked. Maybe the two men had seen that need to pretend in the other and left it alone. But Jude didn't have to be that any more. And finally, Cole had come to trust Jude enough to share his own details, and perhaps come to grips with the things he liked without feeling guilty or wrong for it. Jude had had a confidant in Zach, another sexually dominant man he could discuss things with, a good friend, even though they'd both loved the same woman. When Zach had died, Jude lost that. Fortuitously, he'd bumped into Cole some months before, and they'd reconnected their friendship. You said she took it well. That she sounded excited and happy. Let it be. Stop feeling guilty about it. You all live close to each other. You'll be back for New Year's. She's yours too, man. Cole mopped up his eggs with a piece of toast. I know. I just feel sort of selfish for wanting her all to myself. Cole snorted. Why the hell would you feel that? Your woman is incredible. It's clear you love her. It's more than clear she loves you. It's not selfish to want to be creating memories and traditions that will be the foundations for the rest of your life. 
She lived in Europe for years anyway. It's not like she spent every single Christmas here with her family. Go on and be rational. You have something special, Jude. Something I look at and pretend I don't need, but in reality everyone yearns for. You should feel selfish over it. And five hours from home means I don't have to worry about anyone coming over when I've got her bound. I can play for hours with her and no one is going to interrupt. Damn, did that appeal to him in a major way. Cole's eyes lit. That too. I imagine living so close to your family and the fact that you two share so much family in common must mean a lot of interruptions. Yes. He didn't regret living in such close quarters with their family. He loved it, and it was a value he and Rory shared. He knew their children would have that closeness of kin they did, and knew it would serve them all their days. Family was, in the end, the most important thing a man could do. Not just marriage or partnership with another person, but children, home and hearth. Building a life for not only your generation, but touching those beyond it. Being with Rory, being loved by her, had made him into a family man on a whole new level. At the same time, when your brother lived a few streets away, it meant a lot of drop-in visits. It meant there were times when he didn't have the opportunity to go as deep with her as he'd wanted. He'd have days to lure her, seduce her over and over again at his pace. However loud she wanted to be, whatever and wherever. A flush worked over his chest, thinking about it and the new toys he'd picked up in preparation for this trip. Cole's left eyebrow rose slowly. Must be some plans in your head right about now. We need a place where the world falls away. There was the boat, the boat Rory loved to sail. The boat that had a lovely bedroom chock full of toys. A boat Zack had built and turned into their getaway. Jude paused. And there was Zack again, impossibly far away, and yet always so close. I feel like a total asshole, but I want to move into a place of our own. He'd blurted it, needing to just say it so fast he couldn't change his mind. Again, Cole took his measure. Can't say as I blame you. It'd be hard to live where they lived, to try to make memories where hers and his were first, will always be first. I can't expect her to pretend he never existed. I think of him all the time, too. I don't think I'd agree that wanting a house of your own with her is you asking her to pretend he never existed. Have you talked to her about it? When we first got together earlier this year, we decided to stay in the house but move bedrooms. I thought I could deal with it, and the economy sucks and all, so it would be better to wait. How's that working out for you? Cole snorted and sipped his coffee. Smart ass. She's had a lot to deal with in the last nearly two years. Can I ask her to marry me and move out of her own home because I can't deal with her dead husband's memories? What kind of dick does that? Cole waved lazily, leaning back into the booth's squeaky upholstery. You're not even giving her a chance. You haven't brought it up. It's a reasonable thing to want your own home, a reasonable thing to bring up these concerns to the woman you plan to marry. Rory is a smart, together woman, and she loves you. I just... He was my friend, too. I miss him. Which sounds so fucked up, given that I'm with his wife now, and I loved her before, but it's true. He was like a brother to me. They were good together. I admired that. Admired how he was with her. Envied it, too, I suppose. Jude had learned a lot about dominating a woman, about how to bring it into a relationship and keep an eye on the balance of power from Zack. He took a bite, chewed as he thought. But she's mine now, and I'm not going backward. This is going to sound harsh, but take it in the spirit I deliver it. She's not his wife anymore. He is dead. She is yours. You said it yourself. Cole looked around as he leaned in. He'd be the first guy to tell you to own her fully, to thank your ass and little green apples that you've got a woman like her giving herself to you. Jude smiled. Yeah. Chapter 4 The drive was nice, long but not too long. 
just the two of them in the truck, Rory humming and commenting on the scenery, feeding him snacks here and there. Each mile they passed between Oakley and Highlands, North Carolina, relaxed Jude more and more. The roads were in good shape, though as they rose in elevation, they hit a few scattered snow flurries. He loved the light in her eyes, the wonder she didn't hide as they traveled. I'm glad it's cold. This way you'll be in sweaters the whole time. I brought the tight, thin ones so you can see my nipple rings. Her murmured response sent a shiver up his spine. Oh, yes, that too. That she put thought into ways to please him the way she did never ceased to amaze him, fill him with a dizzying lust even as his love for her grew. She was that to him, softness with an edge, refuge and incitement. Everything he never knew he needed but would be lost without now that he had it. The resort loomed ahead at the top of the mountain, looking very much like a scene from a postcard. Even better, she leaned forward in her seat, eyes widened, hands clasped at her heart, smile as wide as Texas on her face. It's perfect! Oh, Jude, thank you! She turned to him as he keyed off the ignition once they'd parked. Because there was simply nothing else he could do, he leaned in and took her mouth, his palm sliding around the back of her neck to hold her to him. Her sweetness burst through his system. I love you. He pressed one last kiss to her brow and headed to get her door and get them checked in. Their cabin was indeed isolated, though they all were. The windows faced the valley below, nothing but sky and trees. The last bit of any stress he'd had fell away as he dropped their bags and turned to take the place in. Naked beams. He smiled and slid his gaze to her, finding her looking at them too, a flush on her cheeks. In two steps he was pressing himself to her body, leaning to speak in a hoarse whisper, his mouth against the sensitive shell of her ear. Does that make you wet? He circled her, noting her shiver and the hitch of her breath. I'm going to have you right there, arms above your head, bound up for my pleasure. She swallowed hard and met his gaze. Yes. He hummed, the electricity between them licking his skin, igniting the need never far from the surface. Please. It was a whisper, but every cell in his body stood at attention, ready to serve her, to bring her anything she wanted. Baby... I promise I've got lots in store for you. First things first, out of your traveling clothes, you know what I like. I'm going to build a fire to get the room warmed up. She tiptoed up to brush her lips along his before she moved away to change. Rory's hands trembled just a bit as she pulled her boots off, followed by her jeans and the hoodie she'd worn to keep warm on the drive up. He liked her breasts free, so that's how she kept them at home and... That's definitely how she'd be high up in the mountains, far away from intrusions and interruptions. Anticipation raised goose flesh as she changed into the thin, pale sweater that hugged her boobs just right. The deep V exposed the curves of each breast, and when she leaned just right, he'd get a glimpse of her nipple and the ring. Knowing she'd be on display just for him always made her hot. She changed into a loose, thigh-length skirt, Another thing he liked, because it gave him access to her pussy at all times. She left on the panties, his favorite kind, barely there, sheer, with side ties. She tied her hair up and back and headed into the main room to watch and objectify him while he built the fire. There he was, on his knees in a pair of faded blue jeans, T-shirt riding up a bit in the back, enough to see a slice of golden-brown skin she knew would be warm and taut muscled. His shoulders rippled as he moved the logs, and she leaned back against the chair, just taking him in. So masculine. Handsome to the point of nearly being pretty. His wheat-blonde hair always just a bit too long, but long enough to drag her fingers through. Thick and soft. Enough to grab to haul him closer when they kissed, or to urge him higher as he kissed the back of her knees. He moved with a predator's grace, strong and sure. Watching him build that fire was the very definition of masculine. She exhaled slowly, letting the desire to take a 
big bite out of him washed through her system. He turned and locked his gaze on her. The light from the flames cast him even sexier than usual as shadows played over his features. Darling, when you look at me like that, it gets me all tangled up inside. She hummed her pleasure as she moved to him, reveling in the way his gaze ate her up as she did. His lids dropped halfway and he got to his knees facing her. His hands on her calves were warm, pausing to knead or to leave the ghost of a caress as he moved them upward under the skirt. He tipped his head back to look up into her face. So handsome and sexy, her breath hitched and her hips jutted forward. Good. Her breath caught again as he dragged his short, blunt-tipped nails up her thighs. I'd hate to be alone. A smile from him, and then he bent his head, pushing the hem of her sweater up with his nose to expose her skin. His mouth, hot and open against the flesh of her belly, brought a groan from deep. She grabbed his shoulders as her knees buckled slightly when he nipped at her navel and laughed the sting. His fingertips brushed over the material of her panties, a breath of a touch. Her scent hung in the air, and he didn't bother resisting the urge to bend a little and press his face against her pussy. His groan was an echo of hers as he held her to him. Perfect. He breathed over her, knowing the air would stimulate her, but not enough. And then he stood. Her pupils were large, dark against the color, lids at half-mast, and the way she held her mouth told him she was letting herself fall into her submission. He kissed her neck, and the sound she made ricocheted through him. The hollow below her ear, the corner of her jaw, and then that mouth. I want you to undress and then give me the toy bag. He stepped back to get his head together, dragging his fingers over his cock through the denim. She let the skirt fall to her feet and then peeled her sweater off, letting him see her in nothing but the panties she knew were his favorite. A few heartbeats later, she shimmied from them too and bent, her breasts swaying, the stones in the nipple ring she wore catching the firelight. She put her things on a nearby chair and then brought him the bag. In her view, as she stood with her hands at the small of her back, he brought out the new crop he'd picked up on his trip to Dallas. She made a sound then, a soft, yearning plea, and he looked up to her, loving the raw desire on her face. Knowing she wanted the things he did, that she got off on this as much as he did, this path was not just his, or not only hers, but theirs. I can't wait to see what your ass looks like with the marks this will give you on it. In fact, he walked to the foot of the bed and sat. Perfect height. She watched him, her nipples dark and hard, her breath ragged. You know what I want you to do. She lay over his lap, placing herself just so, right so that her ass pitched up enough to give the perfect vibrations up to her cunt. Her hands lay flat on the floor. He dragged the tip of the crop over her ass back and forth, softly caressing her until she relaxed. The creak of the leather handle and then the sound of the wick of air being split as the crop swung brought a gasp from her lips at the same time he tasted his own. His cock throbbed as she squirmed in his lap. The first strike, it was the sound that brought her moan. The burn was dull, barely even a sting. That would come, though, she knew. Anticipated that stew of chemicals he'd wring from her as he played her body like a master. At the second crack of leather against flesh, the dull burn was replaced by a bloom of heat, a sharp sting that brought her intake of breath. Her skin was hypersensitive to each touch, each time he brought the crop down against her skin, she fell deeper into the velvet of subspace. He shifted, abrading her nipples with denim. She swallowed hard, letting her body take over as he built her climax up. She knew he'd be looking at her skin, pink with her flush of desire, darker pink where he'd brought the crop down, hard. Not too hard to really harm, but hard enough to bring a sting and some heat, stripes on her skin, the contrast with her normal skin tone would incite him. Knowing that, feeling the steel-hard ridge of his cock against her hip, 
only made her wetter, hotter, nearly mindless with need. He shifted again to blow across her inflamed skin. So beautiful. Your skin is so pretty and pink. I'm going to fuck you from behind just so I can look at your ass while my cock is deep inside your cunt. Just so I can see the new tattoo. Because I like how deep I can get that way. She nodded against him, wordless. Up on the bed. I want your hands on the headboard. Don't let go. Her movements were less than perfectly graceful as she got up on the bed. He looked imposing there, his face in hard lines, desire taut. The air was warm. She knew he'd made it that way on purpose, so she'd be comfortable naked. Right then, all she could do was think about how he still had his clothes on. She wanted him inside her like he'd just described, wanted to feel the bristle of the hair on his thighs against her skin where he'd used the crop. His smile and the light in his eyes told her he had his own plans, and he'd get to it when he was good and ready, which only made her hotter for him. Her fingers dug into the headboard as she watched the way he reached down and pulled his shirt up and over his head. Oh, boy. Before I fuck you, I'm going to eat your pussy. Take the edge off a little. Beyond words, her brain managed a whee. He got on the bed behind her. I can see how wet you are. His knuckles brushed against her clit, sending dizzying little waves of pleasure through her body. You're slick and wet, shiny with your juices. He said this with his lips against that crease where the cheek of her ass met her thigh. Dark and swollen, ready for my cock. Spread wider. Rory inched her knees wider and nearly screamed when he took a long lick from her asshole to her clit. Over and over, he took long, wet licks through her cunt, over each fold and into each dip. He knew each and every spot, just how hard or soft she liked it, and he used it to ravish her, to devastate her with the buildup of so much pleasure she wasn't sure she could withstand it. She rocked forward and back to meet his mouth until he stilled her with a firm hold, his fingers spread wide over her thighs, holding her open and just where he wanted. There was no hiding from it, from the intensity of sensation drowning her. Instead, she embraced it, leapt into it, and opened up to an orgasm that felt as if her entire body exploded apart and welded back together in his arms as he lowered her to the bed, careful to keep her on her belly. Wow, she managed to mutter around a tongue that felt like a bag of sand. He laughed, wrapping himself around her, trailing kisses along her shoulder. When she got the feeling in her legs again, she'd go for that belt buckle. I think we should take a walk. The room even came with two walking sticks. I think we should have more sex. He nipped her shoulder, making her hiss and then shiver. We will, greedy, when I'm ready. You'll need to recover... Because I plan to fuck you so hard it makes that slapping sound you like so much. Oh, God. She loved when he thrust so hard her tits bounced, and his skin meeting hers actually made a slap. Loved the raw edge of his control. She smiled, her face buried in the blankets. The bed rustled as he rolled from it, and she turned, enjoying the cool of the comforter against the heat on her ass. Damn, he was easy to look at. Smile hinted at the corners of his mouth. What are you thinking about, darling? Should I be worried? Love filled her, blurring her vision for a brief moment. She moved to him and straight into his embrace. His heart beat steady against the ears she pressed to his chest. Just about how awesome this trip is. And about how much I love you. I was just thinking the same thing. I suppose I can let you draw me out into the cold. A walk does sound good, and maybe the cold will soothe my ass. Will it be all right to leave with a fire going? I don't plan a big, long walk. There's just a path here. He pointed to the map of the resort. Maybe ten minutes? 
We won't even be totally out of sight. The wood isn't popping or anything. He brought the rest of the bags in while she got dressed in warm clothing and surprised her by handing her a brightly wrapped package. I think this might come in handy. You spoil me. She grinned as she tore the pretty wrapping away and found a soft cashmere scarf, cap, and pair of gloves. I was born to spoil you. It's my job. He put on his own gloves and a cowboy hat that only made her more reticent to leave the cabin. He looked so delicious. Chapter Five. The trail near their cabin was quiet, but for the crunch of gravel beneath their feet, snow fell on and off in delicate flurries, enough to cling to Rory's hair, spun gold with icy white. Her cheeks were rosy, eyes bright as she took in the scenery. Her hand fit in his just right. It was just the two of them, far away from all responsibility. It felt damned good. We need to do this more often. Get away from Oakley and our friends and family. That she said at first surprised him. I think we need it. The time alone. They kept walking, occasionally halting for her to take a picture or two. The silence between them was easy. I think so too. They stopped at an overlook where he dusted the seat of the pretty bench for them to sit and take in the view. The light was fading, and they'd need to go back soon. She eased to sit, and his cock stirred back to life as he remembered the sound she'd made while he used the crop. You okay? She turned to him, smiling, head tilted. You mean my ass? She laughed. Yes, the sting is gone. You never really hurt me, Jude. The meat of her thumb slid over the scruff of his beard. I never mean to. I know I did once. She sighed. You love me. Take care of me. That you were a giant dick once when we dated isn't part of what we have now, except that I know the sweetness in you I only suspected you had then. She looked down at their hands, clasped and resting on her thigh. You waited for me. He'd waited for her for years, and now she was his. He wondered if there'd be a time when he simply took it for granted and hoped there never was. Hoped he never lost that sense of joy and holy shit, I'm a lucky man. In his step, I don't deserve you, but I sure as hell don't plan to give you back. He kissed her harder than he'd planned to to underline that. I'd have waited a lifetime for you, he gasped when he broke away. She looked up, eyes glossy with emotion, her swollen bottom lip trembling just a bit. It came naturally to kiss her again, and so he did. She scrambled into his lap, facing him, wrapping herself around him. Every day I wake up and you're there. Your scent is on my skin. I have a moment when I am nearly overwhelmed by my blessings. You anchor me in a way I can't really explain. It's unshakable and deep, strong, and it makes me feel not just loved and safe, but cherished, adored. She held him tighter. Neither of them speaking for several minutes. You look at me and make me feel like a queen. Most people live their entire lives without feeling that way more than a handful of times, but I feel it every single day. He stood holding her still. It's getting dark. Let's go back. She took his hand as they headed back up the trail. Thank you, he said softly as they made their way to the cabin. It was new to him this sort of connection. Sure, they'd been friends most of their lives, and a brief romantic turn before he'd fucked up and lost her to the man she'd fallen for and married. But before Rory, he'd not been totally out with his sexuality. He took his responsibility, his role as the top in their relationship, seriously, and not in an all caps "I'm your master" way, but because she chose to submit, and he should always be worthy of it. Which meant putting her needs first and being aware of what she was thinking and feeling on a whole new level. In truth, it made him a better man, though he wasn't sure anyone but Zach would have understood it if he'd said it aloud. But he wanted to do right by them both, 
What they had was special, and he'd die before he'd fuck it up. At least, on purpose. Dinner reservations in less than half an hour. Not enough time to finish what he'd started earlier. I did tell you they were bringing it here, didn't I? Her delight was clear in her features. You didn't? He shrugged. Thought you might like it. You spent a lot of time thinking about what I like. She dropped to her knees. Why don't you let me think about what you like for a few minutes? We have enough time for me to suck your cock before they arrive. You know, just to take the edge off. He sifted her hair through his fingers before tightening his fist around it and tugging her forward, reveling in her gasp of pleasure. Within moments, her clever fingers had worked the belt and his pants open. Her breath against his cock sent shivers up his spine. She wasted no time taking him into her mouth, hot and slick with just the right amount of suction. He would have closed his eyes, but that would have meant not being able to watch her with his cock in her mouth, on her knees in front of him. There was simply no contest there. Her hair slid forward and back as she moved, sucking him deep and pulling nearly completely off, giving him a peekaboo view, adding to the allure. The pleasure banked, building from his toes as she built him up, slowly, surely, knowing exactly what he liked and how he liked it. Being so well-known was something he associated only with her. She got him all the way to the bone. Content? Utterly and totally content, he continued to watch, continued to let himself fall into her until orgasm swallowed him, sucking him under as he held onto her shoulders. She cut her eyes to his as she pulled back and pressed a kiss to the head of his cock. Better? He laughed, helping her to her feet and pulling her in for a kiss. You make just about everything better. She sighed happily. I love this place. No cell reception. My laptop is at home. A girl could get used to having Jude Callahan all to herself this way. You do have me all to yourself. He snorted a laugh. She made a cute little harumph sound, one he knew quite well since she'd been making it when she was displeased pretty much her whole life. In that moment, he saw her as the young girl and then the teen she was. Blinking, she paused, surprise on her face. What? Are you denying women still follow you around town like lost puppies? <laughs> You're just the she-bitch to smack them down, but... No, I don't notice because you're in my bed.